Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. In this short episode, this week we're going to answer the question, can international players play basketball at a U.S. prep school? Okay, and the answer to that in short form is yes. So prep schools love diversity within their student body. They love kids from different races, uh, countries, backgrounds, beliefs, socioeconomic situations. They want a diverse pool in their school because they feel that this diversity uh, can really help everybody involved, learn more about each other and how other people live. And people have different ideas when it comes to uh, projects, academics, etc. So yes, prep schools love this diversity. And over the course of prep athletics being in business, we have placed kids from over 20 different countries into prep schools to include every continent except obviously Antarctica. So yes, the short answer is prep schools love international basketball players. All right. One thing they bring to this school are kids that speak multiple languages. Prep schools love this. Um, they also uh, might play more than one sport and they're going to bring a dis- different aspect to the school than you know what might be there already. Basketball coaches also like international players as well. Some are really good. All right, you look at the prep school ranks, there's been kids that have come through that have gone to the NBA, to high major college, to high academic schools. So the coaches also like the diversity the players bring to the court. Stereotypically, European and Australian players are very fundamentally sound, and that's an attribute there that coaches look at. All right, so um, they can go to prep school and succeed. Now, what's the process for that? Well, first, if you're international and want to go to a U.S. prep school, You've got to navigate the hundreds of prep schools out there to figure out which ones are the right fit. And yes, this is a plug for prep athletics right now, but feel free to reach out to me and I'll let you know pretty quickly if this option makes sense for you and your family or not. If it does, that's where I come in to help you narrow down all those prep schools into the right fitting ones to talk to and kind of see if any of those will work for you. Okay. Um, So what do you need to do uh, once you do find the right fitting prep school? Well, one, they're going to ask for a few things. One, your transcript, all right? And some places can transcribe and translate your transcript into the U.S. transcript system, all right? And the U.S. transcript system is each school has their own transcript, but it's pretty much an A through F scale with a 4.0 GPA scale. And the NCA looks at these to make sure that you've gotten the right credits and the right grade point average and the right test scores, or at least used to be test scores, um, to make sure you're eligible for NCAA. If you come from a different country and you're in an IB program or another program that kind of has a different grading scale, schools will need to translate that. Now, if you come from a weird country or a weird uh, academic transcript producing school, you might need to get that translated. Um, I have a person I work with, and she used to work at the NCAA for years, translating transcripts from uh, the foreign school to an American system to see if they are qualified to play in the NCAA. I have her. She's done great work for a lot of my clients that come from foreign countries. So if you ever need help with that, please let me know. I can absolutely absolutely connect you uh, to her as she has now left the NCAA and works as a consultant for uh, individual students and college programs. Okay. So one, get your, get your transcripts translated. And if you have good grades, it's going to bode better for you. Two, If you come from a country that English is not the first language, you'll most likely need to take the TOEFL test or a Duolingo Duolingo test. And these two, just check to see what your ability is. Some schools have minimum standards for what your TOEFL score needs to be. Others, uh, same for the Duolingo. Some, if you interview well, that will be just fine as well. Okay, but speaking English and being able to survive in a prep school classroom are going to be very important for you as an international player. Um, also international players I've brought over have done really well. And, um, one of them named Louis Tang came over from Taiwan and took an entire year off of his you know, high school basketball playing career to learn English. Um, after that sophomore year of just learning English, he was very proficient, went to a school in Washington DC for two years. And now he's playing for VMI, which is D one on a full ride. And it's a very good academic school. So that's a kid that had zero English 
and now he's playing D1 for free at a high academic school. So it can be done, but schools will want to make sure you can serve in the classroom. And lastly, the big thing is financial aid, right? Um, a lot of prep schools in the past have used Chinese uh, pay, full-paying students to help fund their school. So they do like international kids to pay a lot. But there's also merit money involved, too, that they will pay to a student if they've got good grades, if they're multilingual, if they represent a country that's not already represented at the school. So there are some benefits there as well. Also, when international families are filling out the financial aid form, it's a little bit different than U.S. families that are filling it out because U.S. families have to actually submit their tax returns. Now, they don't require, these prep schools do not require international families to um, uh, submit their tax forms. It's just kind of a trust thing. So what I find works best with international families is just putting out a flat cost. Like, hey, this family can pay $30,000. Does that work for your school or not? And the family will have to fill out financial aid, but schools kind of know real quickly uh, what number will work for them with a kid based on their academics, what they bring to the table, and their athletics. Uh, a couple of big time kids that Prep Athletics has worked with over the years is Philip Abraka. You know, Philip came from Serbia. He played a post grad year at Williston, Northampton, and then he played three years at North Dakota, and he transferred last year to Iowa. And he started for Iowa last year on an NCAA tournament team. He'll start again this year. Uh, his dad also played in the NBA, and, and Philip's just been a joy to watch develop since he's came to the States. Uh, and then I've got two Taiwanese kids, Louis Tang, who I talked about earlier, who went to VMI, and Benson Lin came over, uh, went to Hargrave, then St. Andrews, and then he played one year at Bryant, uh, was first team all-conference freshman, and uh, then uh, went into the Chinese draft, was drafted third during COVID, and he's now playing pro in China. So some good success stories there. Uh, some other of my foreign players have, have done uh, other great things as well. I'm not going to get into all that. Here, you can check the website to see where these kids have ended up. But um, it's it's just the schools love international. I love connecting kids from international countries to the right-fitting prep schools because they learn so much here playing the U.S. style of ball, the U.S. culture, the academics, and they usually always um, are very happy with their experience. So if you got any questions about attending a U.S. prep school and you're international, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, you can go to my website, prepathletics.com, and reach out to me there, and I'll be more than happy to let you know um, if this is a good option for you. So the answer is yes, you can play at a U.S. prep school if you're international. you got to make sure certain boxes are ticked, but it's a great option. So thank you for tuning in this week's uh, episode. If you like this and want to subscribe, I'm on all the major podcasting platforms, as well as subscribe to the channel on YouTube. And uh, you can go on the website, prepathletics.com, sign up for the newsletter, and reach out to me on there or Twitter. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Corey Heights of the Prep Athletics Podcast. We'll see you next time.